Hello and welcome to Latter-day Profiles. I'm Brian Howard. We're here on the campus of Brigham Young University, Idaho, and joining me today is John Dye. John, welcome. How are you, Brian? I'm doing it's great. It's good to be with you. Good to have you here. John is the Director of Digital Media at Bonneville Communication, actually here at BYU-Idaho this week uh, when we're taping this for a P2B, Power to Be conference that's uh, going on here at BYU-Idaho with lots of great individuals coming to help get the students excited yeah. about life and things. The talent is incredible. I was amazed when Steve Davis went through the roster of those speaking, so I'm humbled to even be named with some of those individuals on that list. So. Well, I'm excited to have you here, and thanks for taking some time out to, to chat with us. We want to find out a lot about you and talk about your position with Bonneville, but first let's, let's uh, backtrack a little bit. What's your hometown? Where are you from originally? Originally from Montana, Corvallis, Montana. Um, gosh, I, I graduated in a class of about 69, I think, students. Yeah. And uh, not many Mormons up there, but uh, it's interesting. My genealogy, the, the, those that came before me, the die name, they... They were the first uh, members in oh, wow. that area. So long line of uh, dyes in the Bitter Valley of Montana. So that's where I started and came to BYU, Idaho. Back then it was Rick's. Uh, just followed in the footsteps of my older brother and sister and loved my experience here. Absolutely loved it. I was say, as I was looking at uh, some of your information, I saw that you were here. But I was here at the same time. I was post-mission. You were pre-mission. Yeah. So yeah. chances are we crossed paths. It wasn't that big at that point. But sure, but, sure. Uh, I would pretend that I could remember you or you remember me, but I don't, so it was good that we crossed paths. Uh, did you know when you were here at Rick's BYU-Idaho before your mission or what, what you wanted to go into? Because as I was looking at your degree and what you're doing now as digital communication, your degree was in English, both your uh, sure. undergraduate and graduate degree. So it goes through that progression of, you know, how did you decide what you were going to do and why did you first focus on English? What was your career goal at that point? Yeah, you know, I... As is the case, I think, with most people, there are influential people that enter their lives. And uh, I had one of those in high school, an English instructor, Mrs. Schumacher, who, mm. you know, if they just recognize talent or it's just that one time that I don't think that they know they're changing lives, but they say something. Mm. And it sets a, a group of events into motion that, you know, later you can look back and say that did something to me at the time. Maybe you didn't even know. Mm. But I had a few of those instructors here, too, in English who just said, John, you're talented in this area. You should consider moving in that direction. And I always enjoyed it because math, the answer is right or wrong. Mm. But I could, I could uh, bluff my way sometimes through those <laughs> essays and, and make it sound like I knew what I was saying. But uh, I really enjoyed the English language and just nuances that way. And so, so that, it just felt right. Just felt right. So did you have a career goal at that point? You say, what am I going to do when I finish with this? Degree? You know, I, at that point I didn't. I just knew uh, my father was a teacher, my mom's a teacher. Um, I eventually decided I might want to teach and uh, served a mission in Taiwan. And I thought, gosh, this would be great to go back and teach English in Taiwan and just amongst the people that I love and, and do something there. And you come back off your mission and, you know, you meet people in your lives, you get married and, um, you know, it, it's interesting how the long and winding road took me to where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. So, When did uh, social media, digital media intersect with your life? When did that come into play? Yeah, so I graduated from here, went on to BYU Provo. I uh, got my master's in English down there after I finished my bachelor's. And, uh, you know, occupation started. Uh, it was a technical writer, just too dry and boring for mm -hmm. me. And so I moved on to the agency scene, ad agency. And... Uh, did a lot of project management, some copywriting there, and I really enjoyed that. I really mm. enjoyed that, but I could see the, the evolution from traditional media to more of the new or digital media, and uh, that really intrigued me. I love the real-time uh, uh, you know, things that you could do with social media at the time. Google was, came on the scene, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, the display ads and the search, and I just saw a lot of potential there, and I knew that probably was the next frontier for advertising. So I've got one foot in the traditional door, but one in the digital, and I've, I've loved the digital media, and I've been involved in that for quite some time now. You know, it's interesting because you got all this training going up through college, became an you know, excellent writer. Uh, all of the stuff you did after that was pretty much Self-training, right? So how, how did you right. learn the things? How did you go about that? Was it all talking to people, reading? How did you go about getting yourself up to speed? Yeah, you know, uh, at that time, there really wasn't a lot printed. And so it was really blogs or things that people mm -hmm. put online. And so just like anyone, I think you follow your passion. 
and that takes you to where you end up. And so it was just something that interested me. I decided, gosh, I'm going to learn as much as I can as quickly as I can. And so I just did the research on my own, started to learn more about you know, the different things that you could do in the, in the digital media, uh, you know, in that universe. And uh, that's kind of where, where it took me. Hmm. Well, I know you start, did you start Fluid Studio? You were definitely a big part of it. How did that come about? Yeah, so um, just quickly, so my occupation, I started off as a technical writer, then ended up, up at Fluid Studio. Um, I did not start it. It was actually a, a rather uh, interesting story. I'll just give it to you briefly oh, yeah. here. But uh, it was a larger company, Orbit Irrigation Products. Mm. They do hundreds of millions of dollars with uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, the underground irrigation systems that you see, similar to Rainbird. Um, at that point, though, they were doing their, all of their advertising in-house. Mm. And we had a talented bunch of people. And we said, I think we can take this group of people and actually become a profit center for the larger company. And we said, uh, let's, let's give it a try. So we did a, a DBA, which stands as doing business as. So we weren't a real uh, set-apart company from Orbit. We just dipped our foot in that pool and said, is this a valid model? Could we follow this? And we were picking up uh, clients left and right, and they noticed talent. And so I think uh, you know, things went well for a while that way. And we decided, gosh, let's break this off from Orbit, and we'll become a true profit center. And so we started that. So I was president of Fluid Studio. Um, at that time and reported to uh, David Beck, who currently serves as a general young men's president. And uh, he was a great mentor to me. What a, a wonderful man and a wonderful business mind he has. Um, and so I worked there until I started working for the church. What kind of projects did you take on? It sounds like that's it's not an interesting beginning to go from basically sprinklers to social media, doesn't it? Right. <laughs> what kind of projects did you take on? So traditionally what we did with Orbit was packaging, retail packaging and, and their point of purchase materials and things like that. So very traditional in nature. But um, again, as we started, as things started to morph and, and websites started to come into, into play and then more digital media, we started to do a lot more with that. And I, I started to see, oh gosh, it would, probably would have been uh, uh, seven years back, probably around 2007, that social media was starting to enter the picture. And you know, some of these early uh, uh, platforms like Twitter yeah. and Facebook started to, to enter the picture. And uh, those I, old early platforms. Exactly. <laughs> well, MySpace at that point, right? And oh, yeah, Friendster. MySpace. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I, I noticed, though, the potential that those could have. Those were social peer-to-peer -peer type networks. But I knew that brands eventually would find a way to get on those, and they'd need to monetize those. And so that's really where my, my passion took me at, at that point was social media. And how do you leverage that to get the brand voice into that person-to-person -person conversation? Mm -hmm. So clearly, your expertise there got you into Bonneville. How did that happen? How did you get connected with Bonneville? Yeah, so traditionally with Bonneville, um, they did a lot of the home front series for yep. the church back in the day. Uh, family, it's about time, and mm. all of those uh, commercials that you might see on Saturday morning or overnight, right? That yeah. uh, that were there. So we did a lot of the promotional material. We would work side by side with them on some of the promotional materials. They tried to get the airing and the viewing time uh, with the different stations, and so I got my foot in the door that way. Met the people. Absolutely loved what they were doing. Mm. It was revolutionary. You know, Michael McLean got his start there, as did many producers that have done major films after that. So uh, just some very talented people. Uh, Brandon Burton is an individual that I started to work with. And um, he, they eventually saw that the direct mail and direct marketing that they were doing with, uh, you know, you might remember Together Forever and right. our search right. for happiness, some of the yeah. VHS videos and DVDs that they try to give away. Some of that direct response was not... Uh, performing as they would have hoped. After a while, the model kind of uh, got to a point where they had to uh, disband and, and re-look at the model that they were taking for the missionary department, who was their main client, to get people interested in, in our church, in the Mormon church. So at that point, um, they said, digital is where it's at. We need to go in that direction. And they started looking at social media, and, and uh, I saw that they were looking, and we were friends already, so I I brought up that there was interest here, and, and it just worked out. Hmm. So tell me about uh, what you do 
in your position there and with the uh, with Bonneville Communication, the digital media? Yeah, specifically, I work more in the, in the social media realm, mm -hmm. but I, our largest client is the missionary department for mm -hmm. the church. And so we will work with them to strategize and carry out the tactics for the, the Mormon.org properties, so Facebook, Twitter, mm. those types of things, as well as the I'm a Mormon campaign. That's the big thing that we're doing. And most recently, we're also assisting with the Meet the Mormons uh, motion picture that is to be released soon. Tell me a little bit about the work that goes into it, because it sounds so simple, right? You got Twitter, you got Facebook, and, you know, all of us have those accounts, like most of us do, so you just throw those things out there, but what kind of back end goes into those kind of campaigns? You know, it's, it's very interesting because content creation, even though it looks easy, as you said, when it's out there, mm -hmm. to actually think through your target audience and tone and voice and how you do that, it's, it's quite complex. And to think of what types of content will most resonate with your target audiences. Um, it's, it's interesting as we look at analytics, that helps form the basis for your content strategy moving forward. And all of that, I mean, there's multiple facets that you have to look at, but um, there is a strong strategy behind it. And you have to really think through the things that you post before you post it, because it has to be for that intended audience. Mm. You talk about analytics, are there other tools that you use to try and figure out how is this gonna connect with my, you know, the people who see this, watch it, that kind of thing? Right, so analytics obviously is huge, but there's also, uh, you look for sentiment. Um, mm. There are certain tools out there that will help you measure sentiment, how people respond to the content that mm. you put out there. Based on the, the verbiage that they use, a lot of it's, the, the connotations are either positive or negative. And so you can say, gosh, that was a good post based on we're getting 93% positive uh, sentiment coming out of that. Uh, we also use traditional methods, focus groups. Uh, we work with uh, uh, research groups who will help us really understand what, what direction we should probably take the content. Mm. Now, what, uh, what do you like best about this? Because obviously you have a passion for it. What is it that gets you, uh, gets you up in the morning, I guess? You know, it's, it's really the cause. It's the church. Um, I have always had a burning desire to try to do as much as possible as to, to bring to pass what we're trying to do as a church. Mm. Um, and so uh, I think if I were to work for someone else, I'd be passionate, but not this passionate by far. Uh, knowing that you get up in the morning, as you said, and have a day in front of you where you can do good in the world, you can bring hope and healing to innumerable people around the world, really floats my boat. Mm. Um, it really makes me happy to know that when I go home, that I've probably touched some lives or something that I've done or been involved in has touched lives and made somebody better. That's the hope. Hmm. You know, if I were to uh, do a documentary on you, follow you around day to day, what's your day like, uh, you know, typical thing? What kind of things do you do? Too many meetings. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there, there definitely are too many meetings. But, uh, you know, a lot of it is creating strategy and working on the way that we're going to, for example, right now, it's October of the year, we're looking at our Christmas strategy and even looking forward to Easter of next year. Uh, we had a very successful Easter last year with the Because yeah. of Him campaign, which uh, had 5.2 million YouTube views during seven days, the week of Holy Week. And so um, as we look to do that, it just doesn't happen. Like you said, it doesn't happen by itself. So we have a very talented bunch of people at Bonneville. We are always ideating around what we can do next to push that envelope and, and put the church out in the best light poss possible. So a lot of it's strategizing, ideating, and then creating the content with other people and getting that published. Is there, uh, I don't know if it's renewed uh, emphasis with Elder Bednar's talk, Education Week, sweep the world, uh, sweep the earth as with a flood with social media. Yes. What kind of impact did that have? Or you already knew that was coming maybe. We knew that was coming down the line, but uh, when it hit, we knew that it would be monumental. Um, it was a clarion call from an apostle of the Lord to start using social media to share your beliefs. Now, a lot of people that might turn them off or they might be a little bit um, concerned or alarmed, right? Um, but one thing that people, I think, need to think of is share moments, not messages. Mm. Um, in your life, you always, you know, you're, you're baptizing your son, for example. Take a picture out in the lobby of you doing that and post that. Being dressed in white and maybe under a picture of Christ is going to catch people's attention. And they, they might ask, you know, what, uh, 
what's going on here? I don't understand why you're dressed in white and there's a picture of Jesus above you. That opens up an opportunity for you to talk about it. You don't need to say, uh, you know, very overtly that I'm LDS, I'm Mormon, this is what I believe, and bear your testimony via cyberspace. It doesn't take that. Share those moments and create those opportunities for people to react to you because we believe the elect will hear his voice and take those opportunities to, to discuss that. Mm. So sharing your everyday life, is that same kind of sentiment that goes into like the I'm a Mormon campaign, the share everyday life of, our, I guess, fairly normal people, right, who are exactly. doing crazy, wonderful things? That's the whole idea behind that campaign is the church is composed of individuals. Those individuals have certain beliefs and faith in certain principles that we can shine a light on and help people understand those things. Everyone lives a different life and their experiences are different, but the church is composed of all these disparate individuals coming together and forming this great body of individuals that uh, are, are very unique and different in some ways, but there's a lot of lightness. And being drawn to the individual is what we're counting on because those life experiences are what what draw people, not to the institution per se, but to the individual, and through the individual, then they'll become interested in, more in the gospel principles. Mm -hmm. I guess we should probably explain, you know, Bonneville and the church publishing, what's the relationship there between those two entities? Yeah, yeah, so uh, I work for Deseret Management Corporation, which is also uh, the umbrella company over KSL and some of the larger properties. So Bonneville resides under that umbrella as well. So. Although we are church-owned, we're in the for-profit arm of the church, Desert Management Corporation. So you end up doing a lot of work uh, with the church as a client for what you're doing for like the missionary very department. Very much so, very much so. Missionary department, we do a lot for uh, publishing services uh, and assist them and, and partner with them on many initiatives as well. One of those things, uh, the Meet the Mormons movie, as we're doing this, is coming out, but by the time people watch this, it'll be out for a while. Uh, tell us a little bit about, about that. That's created a lot of excitement. Yeah, this, it's, it's very interesting because it's the first time that the church has done something like this, and we're living through history. Um, it's a theatrical release, and the idea is not so much to get non-members in, although we, we hope that that will happen, but um, the larger reach vehicles will be down the line when we can reach the non-member crowd. Uh, we really hope that this is an initiative that will draw members in, and members are a little reticent probably at first to bring their non-member friends. Once they see it, though, I am sure that they will feel very comfortable with the way that it's couched. It's very much like I'm a Mormon, where it shows six individuals, ordinary individuals, with extraordinary stories. And so once they see it, we really believe that people will want to take their non-member friends. It's a very unobtrusive type approach. Uh, it's in theaters. It's not in you know, your local ward or steakhouse. And so it will allow people, we think, if they want to take their friends, it's, it's a way to introduce them to the gospel. But again, it's members, if it's only members that go, we'll be happy um, because it'll make you, you walk out of that theater feeling proud that you are a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Well, I, I have not seen it yet. I will have seen it by the time this airs, but the theatrical trailer looks great. I do have talked with Gail Halverson. He's a wonderful guy. Oh, so wonderful. I, I'm, I'm, I am very excited to see it. Uh, you know, if we looked back 10 years, you know, we can count, you know, YouTube and Twitter and all those things 10, 15 years. We're, we're not even around, right? Uh, as you look forward in what you do, uh, what do you see as the future? I know that's hard to look ahead because things change so quickly. How do you work with that? Because it does change so quickly. It does. It does. It really changes quickly. And as you look out on the horizon, you, you never know what the next technology will be. But uh, virtual reality is really coming on. Google Glass and, of course, Facebook bought out Oculus, which is a virtual reality um, mm -hmm. company. And uh, I would not bet against Facebook at this point. Uh, they're laughing all the way to the bank. So I think they can see something that's trending. So virtual reality, for sure. Wearables, um, you, you know, your Nike Plus wearables, and, and obviously the, the Apple Watch, the, or the iWatch that was just announced. Um, wearables are going to be big as well. So things that make your daily life much more easy for you to measure those things and be able to do those things and, and uh, create meaningful experiences. Really, that's all that technology does, I think. It can be taken overboard, that's true, but it's to create meaningful experiences in people's life. Mm -hmm. We only have about a minute left, so I don't want to ask you a too in-depth question, but as you look back, uh, you know, projecting ahead to the end of your career, looking back at what you've been able to do, what, what is it that will bring you satisfaction? What do you want to have accomplished doing what you're doing? 
You know, as, as I look forward, I believe that the church will, it, it will be hard for us to reach all the four corners of the earth with physical missionaries. Mm. We're, we'll, we'll probably crest 100,000 at some point in the future, but we can do it digitally, and it will be done digitally. And so to know that I had a small part in making that happen really brings me satisfaction. I want to bring the word of the Lord to everyone, all four corners of the earth, and I'll do ev anything in my power to make that happen. Mm. John Dye, it's been a pleasure to chat with you, and I wish you all the best. Uh, thank all you right. for coming. Thank you. Appreciate thank that. Thank you so much.